Everybody good? We are sure. Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first and foremost, our job is to protect uh, the family right now. The, the dignity of this case, we want to well, dignity for the family, dignity of the victim, we want to make sure we, we protect that. Um, I'm not going to get into how gruesome this case was. There's no need to. This, this will live on for infamy. And this family will have to live with this. And so to them, our, our prayers are with you. As you said, our victim advocates are with you. They will stay with you. Whenever you need them, just call them up. They do an outstanding job. Uh, to the detectives, to the forensics unit, the ME, everybody who was involved in this investigation, I want to thank them personally because it was a horrible scene for them out there for several days. Um, it was tough. And for the neighborhood that had to have, you know, with us being out there, I know it's a lot on you too. So I just want to get that out there because these are just a gruesome case and this is horrible. Um, and I'll get a little into it further, but it's just one of those things you, you, you can never answer to why. And that's why I feel horrible for the family for it. Um, so our, our victim was an Uber Eats and DoorDash driver. I mean, you watch the video, he's just, he's a guy just like everybody else, just trying to make a living for his family. And on April 19th, at 2.30 p.m., he had dropped his wife off, and he started doing his deliveries. Um, his wife and him were communicating via text. Um, at around 6.43, she sent him a text. He responds back and says, yeah, this is basically my last one. I'll be home soon. And he was right around the corner from their house. Um, at 7.13, she sends a message, but there was no response back. So um, late April 19th into the 20th, she reports him missing. Um, our patrol goes out, they start doing the investigation. Um, wasn't a few hours later, they hand it off to the missing persons unit. Our missing persons unit then takes over the case. Uh, they actually, later that morning, our missing person unit reached out to Uber, Uber Eats, and they were able to provide us some information and his last known GPS coordinates. Um, we post this information on our social media, uh, hospitals, fire rescue, FHP, databases. We kept reaching out to to find out, you know, could he just been missing, did something happen, you know, that it was in a crash. So we're just trying to figure those things out. Uh, the GPS showed that he had gone, his last known location was 3438 Moog Road, which is down Holiday. Uh, detectives went to the house, uh, walked around it. There was nothing really suspicious on out there. Nobody answered the door. And so um, there's actually a body of water across the street. They looked over there to see if maybe something happened. They, there was no evidence of anything going on. Um, but we kept following up on leads. On uh, April 21st, we actually, go back to the house at 3438 Moog Road. At that time, we were able to make contact with the roommate of the suspect. Uh, the roommate was able to provide us video, and you can actually see the victim walking up to the house to deliver food, um, but the video cuts off at that point. Um, on, you can also see that, you know, that was around 645 when the video cuts off, or 655, right there when he was walking up to that house. Um, you actually see on the video that the following day, so that was the 19th when he delivered the food. You actually see on the following day on the 20th, uh, the suspect, Oscar Salas, um, was carrying trash bags with another individual and you can see them carrying these trash bags um, around the side of the house. Um, so our detectives did the right thing. They asked for permission to go through the trash bags, to go into trash bags. Uh, there were several of them. And um, unfortunately, what we found inside of some of those trash bags was human remains. So at that point, we held the scene as a crime scene. We were waiting for Emmy, the medical examiner, to come out. Forensics came out. But we were also able to make an arrest on Oscar Salas. He was arrested at that point for failure to register in Pasco County as a felon and violation of parole. He had been in parole um, in Indiana. He had just moved down to Florida back in January. And so you'll hear his background is a very violent individual but we were able to make an arrest for those charges immediately. Um, and so we knew at that point there was no public threat out there as to what happened, but for us, and this is what takes so long. And I, I wish we were like those TV shows where we can solve everything in an hour. We can't. 
Um, our job at that point, we first and foremost, is to make sure that there's no more public threat. We took care of that. Our second issue at that point was we had to identify the victim, and so we, the following day we were able to do that. But the other part too is we have to build a case. Because I know for many people, everybody think wants things done immediately. I just want a solution. I want this done absolutely like within seconds, because we're used to that with Google. But the problem is it doesn't work that way in the real world with cases. And if we as a sheriff's office don't do everything we can from a forensic standpoint, from an investigative standpoint, hand it off to the state attorney's office, and they're not able to bring justice to the family, then we fail through the pipeline. So we can't fail. We have to do everything. And if it may be slow, it's slow, but it's going to be done right. And so that's the one thing we just want to make sure everybody understands out there is that we couldn't give those updates because we did not want to hinder the investigation. Um, you know, after we were able to identify the victim and notify the family and have victim advocates out there, you know, we were kept through the process. And then late last or last evening on April 24th, we arrested Oscar Solis for felony murder in conjunction with a robbery because we were able to find the victim's wedding ring and car keys in another room in the house um, outside from where we believe the homicide occurred. And so a couple of things real quick. Talk about Oscar Solis. Um, this guy's a... He's affiliated with MS-13 from Indiana. Like I said, he just came down here from Indiana like a month or two ago, two months or three months ago in January. Uh, his charges before, he had been battery, burglary, possession of stolen auto parts, drugs, resisting law enforcement, um, mother burglary charges, home detention placement, burglary, ag bat, battery, battery on detention staff. He supposedly stabbed somebody several times why he was in prison in Indiana. So you're talking about a very violent individual that Indiana released and sent down to Florida. He came down to Florida. Um, they released him on parole. And so unfortunately, now we have a, a hardworking guy, a loving husband, um, who's no longer with us because this violent individual killed him. Um, our call for action we're asking right now is that there are several pictures these individuals, and I'll tell you, if you're one of those individuals or you're the parent or guardian of one of these kids, it looks like they're young adults, they're not in trouble. We just need to know who they are. Can they come forward information? They were actually in the house about an hour before the homicide occurred. So if anybody has any information, please come forward. As I said, you're, you're not in trouble. We just need to keep building this case because we in Florida will bring justice for this family. We'll ensure you know, through the state attorney's office that, you know, the family realizes that we did everything we can because this victim, it's, I go back to it, it's sad. It's horrible. And, and the one thing, you know, us as a command staff, we're consistently, we get these updates on the homicides, we get information. And as I start the press conference, and I'll tell you this, I kept asking, what's the connection? Because unfortunately, a lot of times in homicides, there's a connection there. You know, sadly, we know domestic violence is horrible. Um, we know that, you know, there's drug addiction, drug dealers that will shoot each other over drugs and, you know, beefs over gang or other issues or business partners that are mad at each other. There's something that you can say, okay, there is passion, there is anger. This was absolutely a horrific crime of passion. Uh, this person, you know, you always say the word evil, but this is demonic. Um, this individual is, what he did was demonic. But at the same time, we couldn't answer the question why. What the relationship? There doesn't appear to be any relationship. All it appears is that there was a gentleman who was working, was doing his last delivery of the night, and this person killed him for no reason. And he took him away from his family. So please, if there's anybody out there, any other information, please provide it to us, get it to us. We're building up this case, we're working at the state attorney's office, but we're gonna ensure that in Florida there will be justice. So with that being said, any questions? Which kids are the who they are at all? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll let the one of the detectives, if you guys, you guys know if they... It's Roger Middleton, M-I-D-D-L-E-T-O-N. I'm a detective in the Major Crimes Unit. The roommate does not know any of the children, uh, but says there are several children that come in and out of the home often. Do you expect, are you, are you concerned that those children are alive or not? There's no indication any, anything other than they just were visiting the home. And the guy... He just moved here, so he, does he have any family here, the suspect at all? He, he, his father lives locally, and, and we've been in contact with him. Were, were he the, the suspect and the homeowner, the only two that lived in that home, or do they rent, or who would those kids be visiting? 
it's it's unclear. It's where we're wanting to locate them and, and speak with them. But the, is the homeowner is he the homeowner or are they both they both renters? The home is rental. Mm -hmm. So, are there any potential charges against the roommate or any other individual who may have known anything or participated in this? I mean, that's that's what we're going to keep building the case, but this is period anything in the detectives found out that anybody knew anything. Um, even the other individual who was taking the trash bag out, trash bags out, um, just somebody who the father had sent over to help him. You know, the, the father had um, had a, somebody that would go over to drive him places, would take him places. So that was a person, just somebody who's like, hey, I'll help you move the trash. The roommate actually made a comment to the detective saying, I was surprised the guy actually took trash out. Like, the guy finally did something. Um, the other information is that he may be a, the suspect may be a gamer, so maybe that's why these other kids are over there, they're hanging out at the video games, not sure, but these are other things, this is why we need to figure out some of the information. He is, how old is he? 30? 30 years of age. And he's, and you don't know how these kids are going to out. They could be, they could be 18, they could be adults, they could be minor, that's what we don't, so we don't know. Is there any relationship between the two roommates as to why this guy comes from Indiana and ends up in that house? So the, the house is leased to the roommate and this gentleman's father and when he came down from Indiana his father moved out and allowed uh, Oscar to move in. And the roommate, he wasn't home at the time of the year, did he say where he was at? Or? He was not home and it was corroborated. Are you guys aware of any MS-13 activity that this man was affiliated with with other members of MS-13 in the area? In the area, I don't think. Yeah, nothing? No. And with him not having um, registered himself as a felon, what are the procedures in place to catch people that aren't registering themselves when they move states? So that, you can register with the Department of Corrections in the state of Florida, but you also have to register as a felon within the county. So he was not registered in the county as a, a felon. Correct. But what's yeah. the policy in place to you know follow up that people are adhering to the law in that regard? So the, it's it's a difficult thing. People, I mean, we're a big state, we're a large state. People can they can register with DOC, but we don't know if they're in the county. So it, it's a very difficult task, and it's one of those things that it could be through a traffic stop, it could be through you know a, a, like an arrest like well an arrest like this, an interaction like this. Is that that's when we find out that they didn't re register? Like a crime has to be committed before you know unless he's registered. Or an interaction could have been he could have went missing. And when we found him, we looked him up and said, oh, he failed to register in Florida. What's it been like working with Uber Eats and different delivery companies like this? We've seen a lot of violent incidents happening to delivery drivers, and how are those relationships? So when the sergeant was able to notify his liaison with Uber Eats, they were very quick to give us the information. I'd say it could have been Uber Eats, it could have been DoorDash, it could have been any delivery. I don't think this guy cared. This guy is supposedly from the information I got, I said a lot of this information is so preliminary. The father ordered food for the son. He could have ordered anybody. The, fa the father had no idea what his son was planning. He's not involved today. Anyway. I feel bad for the dad. I mean, it seems, it seems like indications that the dad was just, he had a son that he was basically helping throughout the way. And the you know information is he just ordered food. And so that could have been, I don't want to go through every company because then they'll get all upset, but it could have been any company out there that he could have been delivery for. And that would have been the person. But as I said, this is just a random person. It could have been anybody. It could have been a, a, a member of religious faith that was knocking on doors. And this person just yanked them in and killed them. Sure, you, mentioned that, that's what you mentioned that um, you didn't want to go into the graphic details of this. I, I understand that. Yeah. But how could the roommate not know that something had occurred if it was that bad inside? Oh, but I don't know how much I want to speak on it. It's still yeah. going, but he, he wasn't home at the time. And when he came home, it was it was night, and then the detectives were out the next day. And he had actually been uh, with his family away from the home until we we made contact with him. How's sure. the victim's family doing right now? I I, I know our victim advocate has been working with them. I don't know exactly. I can I can only imagine. I can't imagine. I was like, but that way I can't, I can't imagine what they're going through. The heartache, the heartbreak, the fact that, you know, she's texting him, she's nervous. And honestly, you're talking about caring. I mean, she kept texting him, texting him, and then she notified immediately. Hey, what's going on? Where's the, I mean, she did everything she could. Evil just came. I mean, it, it's, it, this person was just demonic in what he did. And that's, you feel horrible for that wife. And just and pray for him. Most of these delivery services, you know, ring the doorbell and leave it at the door. 
Uh, is there any indication as to why there was an interaction between the two, and did he forcibly bring them into the home? So the camera shuts off. So that's the sad part, is that when you watch the video and the detectives, it says part of the investigation, but when you watch that video, he's literally standing there just waiting, and he probably was thinking to himself, am I at the right house? Because nobody was answering. But then the camera goes off. And that's, we don't have the video of him getting taken inside. Why does the camera go off? I, it's part of the investigation. I mean, it, we, we all have common sense. We can all believe and have our understanding, but until it's 100%, this is exactly why. Look, you all can say those things because in court it doesn't matter, but if I say something, that could be brought up and I can't say it. Did the detective find any blood in the house at all? Sorry. Did you get okay. <laughs> That's all right. There was, a, there was a substantial amount of evidence inside, but it's still, it's still being wrapped up and, and completed. Speaking of evidence, when you guys said you went out there, one of the times you also looked at a body of water, like a pond or something, did you find anything in there? They were out the, the day prior on the 20th just to, to look uh, as far as the, the missing person investigation, just based on the GPS location of the, the victim. For sure, but did you find anything in no. the water? You did not find it. Not that day, the 20th. There's also like, like rumors that possibly a part of the initiation. Like, the, the uh, then, um, there's nothing evidence that will lead to that, but the, the question about the body of water, I'll go back to that. So basically what they were looking for was tire mark. It's something, something that would have shown that somebody entered the water. Uh, a lot of times with missing persons calls, we have to, anytime there's a body of water, you constantly are looking, if, whether it's a, a person with dementia, a child, somebody suicidal, you always are looking around there are any signs so and, until there's actually evidence to say okay further then we really send people in out water to start searching but there was zero evidence of anything that somebody was the, the victim's car was he there at the property who the victim's car the victim's car, car. the victim's car yeah was it, it it was located abandoned just uh like a third of a mile away from from the home is it ever too soon for you to call the sheriff's office with concerns of someone missing no, I mean, that's, that's one thing. We, I can imagine because the police shows, they, everybody thinks that our biggest calls for service are, you know, robberies, you know, homicides, all these. A lot of our calls for service are missing people. Um, that's the majority. That's why we consistently post them out there. And so we tell people, hey, look, we're going to do everything we can because we know that somebody's loved one. Um, why do we have one of the largest canine units? It's because our dogs are consistently out there searching for missing people. Our bloodhounds, our li-fi dogs, our cadaver dogs, we're consistently out there looking. And so... That's one of the biggest calls that I, I, I know we as a sheriff's office, that's one of our larger calls. I can imagine for all law enforcement, it's people go missing. And so how do you find them? What do we do? So that's why we take it extremely seriously. Um, but as I go back to that point, it's, it's never too early. Um, from our standpoint as investigations, we will say, hey, look, these are the steps that we usually take. Um, whether somebody ran away, whether it's an adult, what we can and can't do. But at the same time, as we know that's somebody's loved one. And so when it being somebody's loved one, it could be one of our loved ones. And so we take it extremely seriously, but we have our procedures in place, we have our plans in place. And so it could be that kid that ran away 100 times, or it could be that person that went missing the first time. You know, we take them all very seriously. You mentioned that the keys were found inside the house, the keys to the car. His, his, I'm sorry, his, uh, the keys. Yes, sir. Yeah, the keys, yeah, I'm sorry, the keys to the car. I knew his ring was, but I knew the keys were, yes. But yeah, the car was found third of a mile or so away, do yeah. we know who may have moved that car? Do we suspect that it could be? Still reviewing. Still, still reviewing, still under investigation. So say the neighbors have any surveillance cameras, but I probably imagine we went to every neighbor about 12 times already. But if you have anything, let us know. Well, do you expect to release the name of the victim anytime soon? No, no ma'am. The family can, can, but we won't. Was the victim is Hispanic as well? They're not going to release that information. How uh, cooperative is, is uh, the father of So uh, as of right now, they're, they're being very cooperative. Uh, everybody uh, that we spoke to uh, has, has sat down and, and spoke with us and, and helped out. Any other gang questions? His gang affiliation, does that date back to his time in, in Indiana. Indiana? Indiana, yeah. He wasn't in Florida that long. Uh, well, he was on school in Indiana. How does that work with working with those entities at this point? With Indiana? Like, so our, our Department of Corrections will work with their Department of Corrections. Yep. So, so, this is a second story that we've had around delivery drivers. Do you have any tips for people who maybe are delivery drivers to keep them safe? So, tips for delivery drivers, I would say, 
you know, it's like anybody who's out there. Um, if you're knocking on a stranger's door, you know, and, and I get this is the same thing also where people, they go online and they, they buy stuff from each other and they meet up. You know, for people who are buying stuff and meeting up at places, I'd say always meet well-lit place, a gas station, the middle of a gas station, meet there because there's cameras, there's people out there. If you're a delivery driver, if you don't feel comfortable, don't go. Um, you know, we have body-worn cameras in law enforcement to protect ourselves and protect other people. If that's something you want to do is videotape everything going on. If you want to be on the phone with somebody while you're going up to that house, do that. There's nothing that stops you. You're in a public place. You can do what you want. Um, but as I say, and that's the thing, it's not about the victims here. It's not blaming them, and I don't think you are, and I don't think anybody is. But the issue is we just got horrible people out there. And so always remember that. There's just horrible people in this world. There's just people that are just hell-bent to do evil. And he's so, not he's not no, he's not. So, that being said, I well, appreciate it. By now, those those individuals can come forward. If the family knows them, please come forward. We want to get some more information because we have to bring justice for this family. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.